Hi, welcome to another episode of As the Dinosaurs Turn. I thought one of the maybe interesting things to talk about is how we seem to find exactly what we need when we need it and we get help from people all the time all the time and things just kind of fall into place so so we've talked about the processes involved the paperwork and so forth we get here but you know once you're here and you're living here every day you have to figure out how to be a part of this world <laughs> and so things like getting utilities set up our landlord helped us with that. Thank well, goodness George, for George. George is more than landlord. He's family. Um, George, <laughs> like I have to say that um, him and Carla have been absolutely amazing. They, they did. They did not have to take us to set up our utilities, um, electric and water. Um, they also helped us set up internet and our phone plans and refused to let us be swindled <laughs> um, by having to pay, you know, I forget how many more euro a month, yeah, but anyway, it wound up being a, like a total of like a thousand more a year. And they were horrified that anybody would ever have to pay that much. So I think that there are all kinds of like, they are definitely a godsend to us. So to get utilities set up, George took us to the city hall in our town. And like almost everywhere that you walk into, you don't just walk in and talk to someone at the counter like you would at the local municipal utility in Iowa or something, you go in, a lot of times there's a guard standing there and either you have to tell a machine what you're there for, or you tell the guard what you're there for. And they decide. And yeah. they put something in and you're given a number and you have to watch the screen. This is true almost everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's been true the bank it's been true at the cell phone company um the doctor's office is like this you don't just walk in and start talking to someone you wait and watch a screen and it'll show your number and tell you where to go so either a, like a kiosk number like a window number or room number so we had to do that we got our number from the guard and then they were having computer problems which is like a well, you know, it's a recurring theme in the U.S. too. So <laughs> they were having computer problems. So it was like an hour long wait. Well, and the person, actually the person ahead of us was having a lot of issues. Also, they had a dispute. And so like, you never know. It's the person ahead of you in line that will determine on how quickly things go. Sometimes that's it'll be true. fast and sometimes it was. Long. Yeah, that's true. It wasn't computer problems. It was some issue with the person in front of us. We get called back, get that set up. Then we had to drive. So that was the water. That was water. Then we had to, to get our electric set up. So you drive 20 minutes to Braga, which is the big city nearby. Which is also the, I would do it as like kind of like the county seat yeah. um, equivalent because we live in Povo de, well, we live in Oliveira, which is part of Povo de la Nocho, which is actually part of the Braga area. And so it's kind of like the district hub. You have to go there to set up your electric again. You walk up to the guard, the guard like says, okay, and they gives you a number and he tells you where to go when you go upstairs because the entire second floor of this building has got like zillions of offices, including that's where we went for a SEF appointment. Right. And that was very fast. And then it was the cell phones after that. And then we walk a couple of blocks to the cell phone company. And that's just like Verizon or US Cellular in the US, except again, you don't walk in and get accosted by someone in the store like you do in the u.s where they like descend on you like wolves um you walk in and you have to get a ticket from the kiosk even if, even if there's no one else in the store there wasn't anyone else in the store i don't think when we or maybe there was one there's other one person, person but there was an open spot but you have to go and get your ticket and wait until you get called up so we did, and that's where George did the negotiating with them. And I don't know. I always like when Portuguese people talk to each other because there's gesturing and, and raised voices. And I'm not sure if they're yelling. I don't think they're always yelling at each other. It's just the way they talk. <laughs> I, very passionate. I, I appreciate that. No, and and that actually went really well. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I at that time didn't understand as much Portuguese. I mean, I was trying really hard. Um, but it took a little while. It was, it was, that was the first time we really interacted with people 
outside of the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Um, Our grocery store clerk, I love this. We go to the same grocery store quite a bit because they have the best fuel saver card. Like it's ridiculous the amount of money you can save on fuel. Um, And like I've I've saved like 18 euro on a tank of of gas, like which is impressive. But um, we get in line with her and she gets us the card and she talks to us all about it. And I was trying to help us with our English and all of those things because she's trying to get better at English. But then we have the same kinds of conversations and work on all of those pieces. And there's always somebody there who wants to have those conversations with you and is going to be very patient. We found our people in that respect. And one of the first things that we had an experience with was going to the parade in town. And we were driving, trying to find a parking spot. And we were driving a rental car at that time. And it didn't have a lot of oomph. And we were on a slope. And it just went down. And trying to back up the slope, it wouldn't go. It just, it was just rolling down until finally we kind of got wedged in. We did. One of our wheels (laughs) went over the side of the berm. And I was like, okay, well, let's just get out. We're going to the parade. Um, and we went and I love how it was like, what, what, what? I was like, it'll be fine. There'll be people around next time. Everybody right now we're going, we're going to the parade. Um, and we're talking parade, like as a religious processional, because it was the celebration of St. Joseph, who was also the patron saint of Bavoa. Uh, so we went and everybody was there. Every single child in the entire area was involved in this, either because of their church or because they were scouts. I mean, it was impressive. They were all there. And so we hung out there and we watched all these things and we learned all of the story of Joseph himself and uh, through the actual parade. Um, and there's no candy throwing or anything like that. You know, no floats of people waving high. It's literally religious processional. Um, but at the same time, that was a great cultural experience too. Mm-hmm. We found a great spot to stand. And then as things were starting to kind of be done, we just went back to the car and I literally leaned on the hood and crossed my arms and somebody was there within 30 seconds because they realized like, are you stop or do you need help? I'm like, yes, we need help. And so then, I don't know, there were, there were two other, there was this guy and some other guy and they were, I don't know, they were moving stones around trying to get grip. Some for loose the- asphalt, they moved it. Mm-hmm. So that actually created a ramp to get the tire back. Yeah. And then this bus driver, well, a guy who was a bus driver, he was off duty, but he said, oh, I drive a bus. Let me take care of it. So he put it in gear and he somehow got it in reverse all the way up the steep hill I'm and, you. and turned around and pulled back out into the, into the road for us. Well, exactly. And what I love is I've seen them in town and they still would say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, we needed somebody then, and that worked out great. Mm-hmm. And we that seems to happen to us in our travels a lot, I guess. I think that's always happened to me in my travels. I've never gotten into a situation where there was a problem that absolutely I needed help with, that somebody wasn't right there that, that could swoop in and help me. But one of the things I have noticed is that this is very unique to or to the Portuguese culture of where we are, everybody is highly in tuned and making sure that if you need help, you get it. Um, there's no, somebody looks like they might be in distress and people walk by. It is a, you stop and you help and you take the time. Just like if you, when you go in and you use the machine and you get your number, it might look like there's nobody there and they should be waiting on you, but they could be doing something else. that's really important. And so you need to wait until they're done with their task and they're available for you. We saw, this wasn't us, it was someone we were behind in one of the parking lots where you have to put the ticket into the machine and then wait for the arm to open and they couldn't, something wasn't working right. So one person just got it. There was no horn honking or like gesturing. Someone just went up and was helping them. And I don't know how, what they did, but they got the arm to open they got for this person. Fine. And then like everybody else went on their way. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things I really appreciated. I mean, we see this everywhere. Um, you know, we had a flat tire. Yes, we had a flat tire and we thought we could drive it from where the flat tire was to where the tire store is. And I don't know, there were, I lost count of the number of people, just people walking on the sidewalk who would suddenly start gesturing and pointing at our, at our tire and piece of grass stuck in the rim of our tire. Cause we live 
in a rural area and you park along and sometimes there's grass and then people will be like, I'm like, oh shit, there's something wrong with my tire. No, it was a piece of grass, but you know, it's got it taken care of. And so I think that that, that is like highly aware. They're making sure that, you know, and there's always the idea of, you know, um, being constantly and cognizant of the people around you, not because you're expected to interact with all of them, but that you're expected to react and act if something is needed. So yeah. just like when you're driving a car and you're coming up to a crosswalk and you see somebody on the sidewalk and they might not be that close, you better go ahead and stop because they know a sidewalk or crosswalk is right there for you in that crosswalk. Um, they might just jump out in front of you <laughs> and you're expected to stop. Like jaywalking is a whole, I forgot about jaywalking in this part of the country, but um you're expected to stop if if you are on a bus or you're on the subway um, or you are in line um, and you are an able-bodied adult, um, you are expected to give um, your space and your spot to somebody who is elderly or who might be pregnant or might have kids or might have be special needs in some way. You're expected to give up your position in line to make sure that they are taken care of. Um, that is something that I truly appreciate. It's, you know, you would always get up and make sure that they get their seat on the bus and all of those things. Like, um, it's just a cultural value here, but you always get help when you need it. You always do. We'll do a podcast too about driving. I think. Oh oh God. (laughs) Driving driving is its own. I think we need probably 15 minutes just to talk about driving, but, um, now crosswalks are a big deal here. Oh, absolutely. But I'd say crosswalks, figuring out the roundabouts, all of those things. Um, But there's also an idea of when thinking about making sure that you're taken care of. Okay. For those of you who have children who wear glasses, you know that kids' glasses and gym are just not good combinations of things. Jack had his glasses broken and they were very concerned about it. The, The school called and I thought, oh my God you know, and then Jack called and said, you need to be here. So we went and waited and waited for him and his teacher. Um, Turns out that if your glasses or some part of your property is damaged, then you actually, the school has insurance to protect or pay for all of those things. And the school will pay for it. It's not like one of those things where you just hope your glasses are insured or whatever. That was a no, 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 no. Take these to town. You go around. You need to go to the three um, ophthalmologists or, you know, optometric places like within the next, like, and they're all on the corners. So literally it's like a two minute walk between all three of them and figure out which one will give you the best price and then bring that receipt to us and we will pay for everything in full. Um, it was time for Jack to get new glasses anyway. So, I mean, we went ahead and, and did that the second time they broke and his teachers are still appalled that we haven't just made the school pay for these new glasses because, you know, they were broke because <laughs> his glasses were broken and gem. Um, so I think that that's another piece of it too, is making sure that if something happens that it's all taken care of. Yeah. So it's a culture of helping people. And we've certainly always found the things that we need when we need them. Always. Yeah. All right. Join us again on another episode of As the Dinosaurs Turn. You've been listening to the As the Dinosaurs Turn podcast. Check out our blog at asthedinosaursturn.com and join us again next time for another episode.